you have an issue that you would like to have responded to by the distinguished members on our panel, we invite you to jot it down in the form of a question that you would like to have them field uh, from, from the front panel. If you'll jot it on an index card, uh, keep it short, keep it focused on a singular topic, if you will. And if you have a question, just kind of hold it up, maybe shoulder height. Dave Wills and uh, Enos and a couple other folks who will be making their way around the room. They can get those questions to me. So with no further ado, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to invite uh, Clint Mueller and Sean Adams from ACCG's policy staff to come on up to the front and take a seat. And uh, joining them, I would like to invite uh, Representative Jay Roberts to come up. Uh, District 155, uh, parts of Coffee and Ben Hill and Irwin and Wilcox, Turner and Tiff counties, elected in 2002, if I'm not mistaken, and serves currently as chairman of the House Transportation Committee. Uh, joining the panel also, we're honored to have uh, Senator Tyler Harper with us, District 7, I believe, that's her realignment. Uh, there's a list of counties right here. Atkinson, Bacon, Ben Hill, Berry, and Coffee, Charleston, Irwin, Pierce, Tip, and Ware. I believe the biggest geographical land mass in the district in the state of Georgia. Uh, elected in 2012 and currently serving as vice chair of the Senate Ag Committee. And uh, I need no introduction. I'm Sir Secretary of State Brian Kemp. If you'll join us as well, please. Uh, native of Clark County, Athens, Clark County, uh, my home stomping ground, graduate of Clark Central High School, University of Georgia, College of Ag and Environmental Sciences. Uh, served in, in this office since January of 2010. His responsibilities include uh, <coughs> conducting efficient secure elections, registration of corporations, and regulation of securities and professional licensing, and also the former state senator secretary. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you. What I'm going to ask uh, very quickly is for Clint Mueller to give you a brief sneak peek at what's in your packets and talk about ACC the legislative priorities for just a quick minute or two. While he's doing that, I'll make my way around the room. If you have a question you'd like to see fielded, you can get it to me or Dave or Ian, and then we'll come back to the panel. Clint, the floor is yours. Thanks, Jeff. Hopefully some of you had a chance to look at your folders. We have our top three legislative priorities and the briefs that go along with those priorities are listed in your folder. As you know, the HG policy platform is very voluminous, and we cannot uh, we cannot pursue everything uh, that you would like us to pursue every year. So we try to, to come up with three top priorities, and, and these are the top priorities that the membership has come up with this year. Um, I know our panel will speak to this, but we are hearing that this, this is probably going to be a short legislative session. Uh, quite frankly, I personally hope that's the case. Um, Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm sure Secretary Kemp can uh, address this, but uh, you know, the only changes we think in the beginning of the session, aligning the state and local elections with the, the, the federal elections that are, that are changing because of the federal court decisions that recently came down. And I'll let him talk more about that, but I think that's going to drive a lot of legislators to really be a, a, aggressive in, in running that clock out so they can get out and, and get on with their campaigns. Uh, they're not going to have as much time to, to do that this year as they have in the past. Um, but we do want to continue to work this session on a lot of cleanup legislation. So if you'll notice in our priorities, a lot of what we're talking about is not new stuff. It's just trying to, to address and, and, and go back and, and figure out how we make things better that we've already implemented instead of trying to create another another new law to put on the books. We think that probably more important to go back and revisit the laws we've already put on the books instead of putting new laws on. Uh, but with that, uh, Jeff? Uh, sure. Okay, thank you for that, Clint. And, and you hit it right on the head. Secretary, I'd like to ask you to, to open, if you will. We've uh, This is the eighth of 12 district meetings, and almost, uh, in fact, I'm certain that at each one, the, uh, the George's ability or desire to line up with the change in federal election dates, and I'll ask you, if you will, to speak to that for a moment from your viewpoint. Uh, folks up to speak. Great. Well, thank y'all for allowing me to be here and for the legislators let me crash their, their party here and their district <laughs> down here. Uh, it's great to be back in Fitzgerald. I was just with Tyler the last time I came here. He was doing an event and I got lost and ended up by the technical college out there. So if any, anybody else in your GPS took you out there and called the office and I said, I think I did this the last time I was there. <laughs> uh, it's great to be back. I'm going to tell you, these guys are two of the finest serving in the legislature. Y'all are, are privileged and, and honored. I know they are too to be serving. They're great friends. I served with uh, Chairman Roberts and, and Senator Harper and I have been friends for a long time. They're great friends of our office and I know they do a great job for you in Atlanta. So it's always great to be with uh, these guys. And 
and with the, the leadership at ACCG and uh, the job they do with Ross and Chairman Bird and, and Charlotte asked me, says, did you come from Atlanta? And I said, well, I was actually in Washington, D.C. this morning. I was trying to get as far away from that place as I could, so I just came on, came on down tonight. Um, but we are, you know, we are dealing with, uh, right now, we're dealing with, uh, that's what I was on my phone a second ago, we're dealing with, you know, all the municipal elections, as, as Mayor Gale knows, um, that are going on right now, and, and a lot of, you know, fairly big races, especially in the metro area, and, and there's 120 counties around the state that have elections going on now, many squash votes with some of you all have got, so we've, we've got a lot going on in the office, but we have absolutely got to change the, the election date. You know, to make a long story short, there was a federal judge that ruled and moved our election date to uh, June the 3rd for just federal elections. So that'd be for the U.S. Senate race and our congressional races, but left the state law in place for legislative races, you know, constitutional officers and counties and everything else uh, that would be going on at the time. And there was, a, there was an issue with that June 3rd date. The Saturday mandatory voting would have been a Saturday on, a, on Memorial Day holiday. Our election superintendents were saying that's that's bad. We knew it was bad to have them in there on on that Saturday when everybody's going to be off the following Monday. Uh, so that didn't make sense. And then if you moved it up a week, then the the election would be the day after a holiday, which that didn't make good logistical sense. So we asked the judge to move it to May the 20th, and that's something that uh, you know we did in consultation with the governor's office and the speaker's office and the leadership. Capital, make sure everybody's kind of on the same page. So I, I feel like from the legislators I've talked to and, and the feedback that I've gotten is that everybody's in sync, bipartisan support. We've got to move the dates because we can't have you know the counties holding two primary dates and us having to deal with that. I mean, logistically, that would be a nightmare for, for our election superintendent, for our office, not to mention the cost for the counties, and then just how confusing it would be for the voters. So that's something uh, we actually uh, were talking to the governor's office yesterday about, you know, who's going to be carrying that bill and where it's going to go. And they're working on all of that. Uh, I will say that one thing that we have learned, you know, it seems like a very small change, and it is, but it deals with a lot of the elections code. Uh, so it's going to probably be a pretty long bill just because, you know, when it mentions absentee ballots, you're dealing with the date of the election. When you're mentioning, you know, uh, early voting or absentee voting you know it mentions that so in every one of those sections we've got to go in and just make you know that date change so it'll be a pretty simple bill but it won't be very long and anytime the legislature sees a, a big bill it kind of gives a pause so one of the things that we're working on is just making sure that you know everybody's on the same page and we absolutely need to do it early in the session so we can get it signed uh, one of the advantages of the, of the voting rights ruling that came out this summer is that we won't have to ask for preclearance for that legislation like we've had to do in the past, which would take a minimum of you know 60 days. But it'd probably take it take more than that because you'd have to have the governor sign it, then the attorneys prepare all the documents to send it to the Justice Department. Then they have 60 days, they can ask for more information and it gets them another 60 days, and then all of a sudden you know, you're running out of time. We're going to start absentee balloting. I believe it's on April the 5th. And there's been many days that we've still been in, in session on April the 5th and well beyond. So uh, it's something that we want to have ready to go first day of the session, get it done quickly, get it signed, and then you know get those dates in sync. And I believe that we'll be able to do that. Certainly appreciate